great to be able to win in straight sets. I thought, you know, everything was working uh, really well and in my favor. Uh, two sets to love the, uh, up and 4-2 and then, you know, things started to change. He had set point. Um, I, I, served, I was serving for, for the match, lost the break. You know, maybe lost a little bit of a rhythm there, and uh, yeah, quite quite close ending to the match uh, with crowd getting involved. So of course it wasn't wasn't easy, you know, uh, to 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 close this match out. But I'm really glad I did in three sets. Didn't want to take this match to the four four fourth set. That's for sure. Um, obviously, I, I knew that he's got a lot of firepower. He's an amazing pop on the serve. He's just so dynamic and. Uh, very unpredictable, you know, what comes next. Um, so I just had to stay there mentally, you know, present and calm and, you know, focused on the game plan and what I, what I need to do and be, try to be solid from baseline, which for most of the match I have done and kind of made him play, made him uncomfortable. And uh, overall, the tournament so far has been, has been great. You know, I've been performing very well. Most of the matches went straight sets, except one where I had to come back from two sets to love down. Other than that, you know, performances since... Cincinnati first round to, to, to now to the finals have been really, really good. So I'm really pleased with my tennis and the way I feel on the court. And now for the ultimate challenge and fighting for another Grand Slam title. Okay, thank you. Congratulations once again. Name and affiliation. Use your time economically. I'm going to try to integrate some voices who did not get heard in the last press conference. Okay? <laughs> Andrew, go right ahead. Thank you, Gary. Andrew Jones, ESPN, and Sake Novak, congrats on another Thank slam you. final. On a big day for Serbian sports with the basketball team winning going to the finals. And you didn't have to deal with the humidity this time that allowed you to have a quality first two serving sets. Can you talk about that serving you had in the first two sets as well as the challenges he brought in the third set with his dynamic game? Yeah, it's probably the best serving I've had, you know, the first couple of sets so far in the tournament. And it was important considering I was playing a big server today. So I knew that I, I'm going to get my looks and my opportunities on his serve, but I, you know, it was probably even more important to, to really be comfortably holding my service games and uh, trying to get that first serve percentage high um, and, and don't, uh, don't give him too many chances to come at my second serve and, and attack the second serve. Um, and I think I've done really well, especially in the, in the first two and a half sets. And uh, you're right. I mean, uh, with the roof closed, uh, the the problem of humidity was kind of removed, and and uh, we were still, you know, sweating a lot. But I think uh, much less than in the previous matches, which I think helps players, helps everyone. Really, uh, in the end of the day, the quality of tennis is better, you know, because when 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 it's super hot and humid. Uh, you know, players are kind of dragging themselves on the court and, and the, the quality of tennis is jeopardized. And I think it's just better for everyone that, um, that we play in the conditions where we are able to, to showcase our best tennis. Okay. Brian. Brian Lewis, New York Post. Uh, a, at 36, with the opportunity at least to be the oldest man to win here in the professional era. I'm curious, does this opportunity mean any more to you or do you take it any differently than you might have, say, 10 years ago or eight years ago. And secondly, just the significance of your celebration there, kind of a calling back to his phone call celebration in the quarter. Yeah. Um, well, uh, fact is that at 36, every Grand Slam final, uh, yeah, I don't know. Could be the last one. So I, I think that I probably value this occasions and opportunities to win another slam as more than I have maybe 10 years ago. Because uh, 10 years ago, I felt, OK, I, I still have quite a few years ahead of me. Uh, I don't know how many I have ahead of me now, or I don't know how many of the years where I play four slams in a whole season uh, do I have in front of me. So. Um, so of course I, I am aware of the occasion, um, but I tried. I'll try to approach the Sunday's match uh, as basically any other match with the intention to win, and I'll play my my opponent. And knowing that it's going to be the toughest challenge, without a doubt, not just because it's a final, but also because I'm playing, um, you know, the two guys that. Um, 
the last time I faced both of them in the Grand Slam finals, I lost. Uh, Carlos Wimbledon and then Daniil here in um, uh, 21 uh, US Open finals. So uh, I understand the, the importance of that. And, and of course, they're both in a great shape. But, you know, I think I'm, I'm in a very good shape too. So I like my chances. And I just love uh, Ben's uh, celebration. I just, uh, I, I thought it was very uh, original and I copied him, I stole his celebration. <laughs> that answered. Donnie, Richard. Richard Osborne, usopen.org. Congrats on another final. Uh, I, I know you're not one to look too far ahead, but this number that you're chasing here, 24, has some significance with Margaret Court, et cetera, and I just wondered, how much that number in particular means to you? Is there added significance to it? Not really, to be honest. I'm not, not thinking about that. Um, you know, as I said uh, in the previous uh, answer to the previous question, I, I'm aware that, um, you know, this kind of occasions where I play in a Grand Slam final at this stage is, is almost like a present that, you know, I need to <laughs> accept and try to try to make the most out of it. I was very close to make the 24 in, in London, but you know, lost to a better player on that day in a close five set match. Uh, I might be facing him actually again here, um, which I, I know that a lot of people wanted, you know, before this tournament started. Uh, considering our rivalry and the matches we played against each other when every single match went the distance in, in the last um, three occasions we, f we faced each other. So I'm un I understand I'm, I'm you know, um, every time I'm in, I'm in a Grand Slam final, it's it's a, another shot uh, for history, you know, and, and I'm aware of it. And of course, I'm very proud of it. But um, again, I, I don't have much time, nor do I allow myself to reflect on these things or think about the history too much in this, in this sense, you know, because um, when I did that in the past, like 21 finals here, you know, I was maybe overwhelmed with the occasion and opportunity and I underperformed. So um, I don't want this to, to happen again and I'll, I'll try to, you know, just focus on what needs to be done and, and tactically prepare myself for that match. Okay. Matt? Uh, I know that Matt Futterman from the New York Times. What, when you do have those lulls like you had in the third set, um, I know it's impossible to be perfect for entire matches all the time. But what, what goes on? What goes on? You say you lose your rhythm, you felt yeah. uncomfortable. It, it just seems to suddenly like go away so quickly. I'm curious yeah, I know, I know. I, mean, I wish it hasn't happened. I mean, uh, but again, uh, important thing is to, to bounce back and to try to recuperate after, after that, yeah, whatever you want to call it, the little black hole that you find yourself in, you know, for a few few games where you're, you know, not really yourself, you're missing shots that you shouldn't, or you're not, you know, double folding, you're not, you know, it's it's uh, it's tension, you know. I mean, there is no no uh, secret about it. We all feel it. Um, everyone feels tight in 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 some moments of the match, particularly if it's a big match like this, and. Uh, sometimes you manage to overcome it, sometimes you don't. Uh, that's okay, you know, uh, as long as you reset quickly and, and come back to, to the optimal level, which I think I've done. Again, I had the two drops that I, that I don't like, you know, at 4-3 and 6-5 and serving for the match again. Uh, but, you know, it was crowd, it was his tennis, it was, you know, maybe my drop of level it was a combination of things that were happening and it's it's normal you know we 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 all experience this kind of uh little setbacks on the court uh but as i said important is to kind of move that away as something that already has happened and focus on the next point I'll take a few more in english craig craig Gable, nine australia um it's been a couple of years since you've been in this position over here Think of, do you think at all of what might have been and if you could touch on the emotion of being back in this position? And also, let's say, if it is Carlos, what would be the most significant final that you'd look back on, Wimbledon or Cincinnati? Uh, um, 
probably both, but I think maybe more more recent one, and just because it's played on it was played on hard court Cincinnati, uh, but different conditions, you know, Cincinnati to to here, and I'll I'll probably you know I'll probably look at his matches from this year from last year, played at U.S. Open. I'll, I'll look our matchups and we'll do our homework, so to say. You know, we we do talk a lot about um, the tactics and the execution of, of the game plan. So um, I'm sure that we are going to dig deep into that, uh, whether it's Carlos or, or Daniil, you know, uh, across the net. Okay. Willie, then Howard. Willie Weinbaum from ESPN. Novak, you are 26 and one in major matches this year with one match left. What are your thoughts on what you've done to this point and how does that affect your perspective on the one that's left? Well, I mean, as I said uh, many times in, in the previous years, Grand Slams are the tournaments that still keep me going and motivate me the most to be able to practice hard uh, every day and, and, and trying to get myself on a level where I can compete with young guys. Uh, no doubt that the Grand Slams are the, the biggest you know, goals and objectives that I have. Um, so I, I, I set my schedule so that I could perform at my best in these this tournaments, and that's what happened again this year. So I'm, you know, obviously over the moon with uh, um, with the results so far on Grand Slams. You know, playing playing in all four finals of all four slams in a season is is amazing. I mean, it's the the highest uh, achievement I can I can think about when I start the season. You know. That's that's what I dream about. That's what I what I really wanted. That's where I want to be. You know, in this kind of position. Um, <clears throat> it is, it's it's it, there's another match left. So um, of course, you know, um, conversation will be probably even better if I win <laughs> a title in two days. But uh, definitely, whatever happens, I'm I'm extremely um, yeah, proud and content with, with what I have achieved this year in the Grand Slams. Yeah. Howard, last question in English, please. I know that. Howard Fendrich with the Associated Press. Are you surprised at all that at 36, after all these years, you are still out here doing what you're doing, playing guys roughly half your age and reaching these, as you say, four Grand Slam finals mm. this year? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it probably sounds cocky or arrogant, but I don't really, I'm not really surprised because um, I know how much work and dedication and energy I put into trying to be in this position. So I, I know that I, I deserve this. Um, and, and I always believe in myself, in my own capabilities, you know, in my skills, in my quality as a tennis player to be able to deliver when it matters. So I'm not, I'm not really surprised, to be honest with you, because I feel good physically. I've been as, as fit or as, as prepared, as strong as, I don't want to say as ever, but I mean, as good as I've been in the years and years. So um, age is just a number. That phrase really is... <laughs> resonating at the moment with me and um, you know I, I, I don't want to even consider you know leaving tennis or thinking about an end if I'm still at the top of the game you know I just don't see a reason for that I'll probably consider doing that if if I get my ass kicked by young guys in the grand slams in the in the years to come uh, in the earlier stages and then I'll probably say okay you know maybe Maybe it's time to uh, to move on, but so far, you know, I still feel that um, that I'm in the game.